everyone, it's Benitez here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's WTF episode, I'm going to share with you all how you can extend the document automation toolkit solution. For the agenda, I'm going to do a quick explanation on what the document automation toolkit is all about. Then I will share where you can find a previous recording of a presentation that I did on the document automation toolkit solution. Then I'm going to explain why you would want to extend the document automation toolkit and then a recap of what the use case is before I explain how you can extend the document automation toolkit. Then we're going to jump straight into the demo where I'll show you hands on step by step how exactly you need to extend it. All right. So the document automation toolkit is a solution that was provided by the Microsoft team earlier this year. This process diagram that you're seeing in front of you is a representation of what the document automation toolkit enables. Essentially, it allows you as an organization to hit the ground running to get started with automating forms that exist within your organization. In this diagram, we can see that emails are expected to be received. And in those emails, there will be a form attached to that email that's being sent to a particular mailbox inbox. Now, when that email hits that mailbox inbox, a Cloudflow is going to be triggered where it's going to grab the file from the email and then AI builder form processing model is going to analyze the data that has been provided in that form and then it's going to extract it and store it into Dataverse and then that information that has been extracted will be displayed onto a Canvas app for a user to manually review the data that's in the form, as well as the data that's been extracted by AI Builder to ensure that the accuracy of the two sets of data are the same. So it's pretty cool. And I recommend that you check out this webinar that I did with XRM Vision earlier this year. Now, XRM Vision is a Microsoft partner who is based in Quebec in Montreal. And I show you in detail how to install it, how to use AI Builder form processing model, as well as do an end-to-end -end demo of how you would do the automation for this particular form. Now, the reason why you would want to extend the document automation toolkit is because today the document automation toolkit will display a maximum of 27 fields. In the form that I was using in that particular use case, in that webinar that I did, it had a total of 34 fields that I was automating. That means that we were missing a, to a total of seven fields, so fields 28 to 34, and I needed to include that in the Canvas app so that the user, the manual reviewer user, can ensure that the information is correct. So I want to pause here and just do a quick shout out and a big thank you to Cedric Bellarosa. He is a program manager in the Power Automate team, and he was kind enough to talk me through the steps so that I know how to extend the document automation toolkit solution in the scenario where I need to have more than 27 fields. And I thought, well, I need to share this with the community and other makers out there, because if you are in an organization where you want to automate forms using the document automation toolkit solution, but there are more than 27 fields, well, follow these steps in this WTF episode to make it happen. All right. So the recap of the use case from that webinar is what you're seeing right now. So it's as a tax advisor, when an email is received and the attachment is the Revenue Quebec self-employed net income form, I want the data to be automatically extracted so that I don't have to enter it manually into our system. And I also need the ability to review the data extracted so that I can correct the data where relevant. Now, this is what the form looks like. So this is a real life form. This isn't one that I made up. And as you can see, there's more than 27 fields. 
Now, how to extend the document automation toolkit? Well, we need to update the following three components. The first one is the Dataverse table. So in the Dataverse table of document automation data, we need to add the new columns that represent fields 28 to 34. Once we've done that, we then next need to update the Cloudflow. The Cloudflow that we're going to be updating is the document automation processing Cloudflow. And that's so we can include the new fields that we created or new columns that we created in the Dataverse table. And then the final step is to update the Canvas app. So there is one Canvas app in the solution, and that is the document automation application. So the reason why that Canvas app needs to be updated is so that the end user can see the full 34 fields in that form. So without further ado, this is what the Canvas app looks like. We can see that there are 27 fields displayed, but we need to display more than 27. And this is what the configurator sees. So it's the person who's going to configure the solution. And as an end user who's going to do the manual review, this is what they would see. So they would be only seeing a total of 27 fields rather than the full fields from the form. And so this is why we need to update the Canvas app. All right, so we're going to jump straight into the demo and I'm going to show you the steps in detail of what you need to update in those three components. So let's get started. Step one is to create a new unmanaged solution to add the components from the document automation toolkit solution. In the Maker portal, create a new solution, enter a name for the new solution, followed by selecting a publisher, click create, and this will now create the new solution. Open up the solution and we're going to add the components. So click on add existing and the first component that we're going to add is the Canvas app. Select the document automation application Canvas app, click add, and this will now add the Canvas app to the solution. Next, we're going to add the Dataverse tables. So select table, scroll down until you hit the document automation tables. So these have a prefix of AIB underscore. Select these tables, click next, and it's okay to include all components. So tick all of these check boxes, and then you want to click add. This will now add the Dataverse tables to the solution. The next component that we want to add are the cloud flows. Click on automation, select cloud flow and select the document automation cloud flows. Once these cloud flows have been added, you're pretty much good to go in terms of extending the toolkit. Step two, add new columns to the document automation data table. In the solution, open the document automation data table and we're going to add new columns. So if you scroll down to data 27, this will be the last column. Since my form has a total of 34 fields, we're now going to add new columns that represent fields 28 to 34. Click on add column and enter data 28 as the display name and click done. Repeat this for fields 29 to 34. These columns are used to display the missing data we need to see from the form since the current limit is 27 fields. We're going to do the same configuration for the metadata columns as this is used for the percentage accuracy identified by AI Builder form processing. Click Save Table. Scroll down and confirm all the columns have been created and that's it for updating the document automation data dataverse table. Step three, update the document automation processor cloud flow. In the solution, open the document automation processor cloud flow. Click edit to configure the actions in the cloud flow. Scroll down to the Dataverse Create Document Processing Data action. Click on Show Advanced Options. Scroll down to the new columns created, Data 28 to Data 34. Click Data 27 to copy the expression. 
click data 28 and paste the expression. Update the reference to 28. Now we want to repeat this for data 29 to data 34. The Cloudflow will now store the map form field for fields 28 to 34 in the Dataverse document automation data table. Next, repeat from metadata 28 to metadata 34 columns. Click metadata 27 to copy the expression. Then click metadata 28 and paste the expression. Then update the reference to 28. Repeat from metadata 29 to metadata 34. The Cloudflow will now store the map form field values for metadata columns 28 to 34 in the Dataverse document automation data table. This will reflect the accuracy score percentage of AI Builder form processing. Save the modified Cloudflow. Now the Cloudflow has been modified to work with the additional columns. Step four, update the document automation application Canvas app. In the solution, browse to the Document Automation Application Canvas app. Click on the ellipsis and select Edit. This will load the Canvas app so that the app can be modified. Expand the field mapping screen. Select the hidden mapping refresh button. The onSelect property formula needs to be modified. Scroll down. Next, copy a row in the JSON of the patch function. Add a new row after the last row. Paste the copied JSON. Update the column reference to data 28. Update the index to 28. And update the remaining functions to 28. Repeat for columns data 29 to data 34. I skipped ahead to adding data 34. Next, expand the document detail screen. Scroll down and expand the document header form control. Data cards for data 28 to data 34 columns need to be added. Scroll back up to the form control to add the additional columns. Click on edit fields, click add field, and search for data 28 and click add. Next, the data card for the field needs to be configured. Scroll down to the data 28 data card, expand the data card, click on the ellipsis and delete all data controls. Don't worry, trust me when I say delete them. Next, expand one of the pre-existing data cards, select all three controls and copy, select the data 28 data card and paste. Rename the first control to reference 28. Rename the second control to reference 28. And finally, rename the third control to reference 28. Select one of the pre-existing data cards. Select the display name property. This formula references the map column value in the document automation table taxonomy dataverse table. It retrieves the first 26 columns, but only displays the last column value, which will be data 26 from the document automation data dataverse table. Copy the formula and paste into data card 28. Update the reference to 28. Next, select the first control in the data card. Select the text property. Update the column reference in the formula to metadata 28. Scroll up to the document list screen to reselect an uploaded form. This will refresh the form in the document detail screen to confirm the additional fields are displaying the expected values. The city value and the accuracy score is now displayed as expected for data 28 and metadata 28 columns. Repeat for columns data 29 to data 34. I have skipped ahead to adding data 33.
Scroll up again to the document list screen and select the form control. The additional column values will now be displayed. Save the modified Canvas app and publish the Canvas app. And that's it. All the modifications are completed for the document automation toolkit. Next, time to see the Cloudflow in action. Select a form and send to the configured email address in the document automation email imported Cloudflow to trigger the automation. Next, run the document automation application Canvas app. Run the app as a manual reviewer user. Select the form that was recently emailed. The results of the AI Builder form processing model will now display. Scroll down to see the additional fields. Ta-da! The additional columns are now displayed with the expected values. Now you know how to extend the document automation toolkit. I hope you found this WTF episode useful. And if you are an organization that is utilizing the document automation toolkit and you do need to expand it beyond 27 fields, then go ahead and follow these steps and you'll be able to show all of your fields in your form in the Canvas app. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next WTF episode. Bye! Let's go. Let's go.